welcome to the Brand Organics podcast. I am your host, Jessica Payne. I hope everyone is well. Today's topic is um, a fun one. It was It's a result of a conversation I was having uh, this past week. And um, I was ending one of my brand strategy sessions, which if you've worked with me, you know what these are. If, if, you, if you haven't or you visit my website, you've probably, maybe you've heard of it, maybe you haven't. Uh, these are highly intensive two, three-hour sessions where I sit down with clients and we just plow through a bunch of stuff. We go deep. Uh, I challenge. I poke and prod. And we, and we unroot things like purpose. We create a full brand identity. We talk about what motivates you. We talk about who you are, who you aren't, how you serve. Anyway... It's all rooted in authenticity, and, and I love to see kind of how my clients um, approach that word and maybe have experienced or, or maybe know that they um, could do a little bit more to be authentic. That's kind of the genesis behind a brand strategy session, but it's also the genesis, I think, behind today's today's topic. I think especially this time of year, new beginnings, resolutions, um, fresh starts, we all kind of naturally do some self-reflection, including myself. So asking the what I like to say are the big hairy questions. And one of them is around authenticity. So this question came about, it, it's how to find your voice in a crowded marketplace. Because if you're like me, it can be really frustrating to stand out. Um, the, what they don't always tell you when you have a great idea is there's probably... 10, 20 direct competitors that have an equally great, if not the same or similar idea. And this is something I learned just once I started my own business. I experienced it um, on the agency side uh, when I was, when as a team, we were trying to brainstorm new ideas and, you know, shoot, someone's come up with your campaign already. Maybe they've done a good job or, and then on the business side, it's, you create messaging or you can create something like a logo or a, ta- a tagline. And sometimes it's like you're literally staring at your idea. Someone's already done it. Maybe the, it, it's already patented or, um, or or widely successful. So I thought I'd spend today's podcast talking about a very real question and probably a challenge, maybe even a frustration for you because I've felt it. I feel it every day. How to find your voice in a crowded marketplace. And so I'm going to give a couple tips today and talk about it because um, these are based on my own and others that some of my clients have shared with me. So let, let's let's dive into it. I wanted to use a, a, one particular industry as an example. Um, and it's very close to my heart because most of my clients are from there. It's kind of the global wellness economy. So when you think of health and wellness, you think of wellness tur- tourism, you probably think of beauty, maybe anti-aging, fitness, mind, body, yoga, so alternative medicine. So let, let's, for the purpose of this podcast, let's use that industry as an example. Now, I don't know about you, but it, it, it's it's crazy how how competitive and huge some of these new trending, rising industries are. And one of them is health and wellness. Um, according to the Global Wellness Institute, the global wellness industry is worth um, no fewer than $3.7 trillion. And they've done this really great um, study. You can find it on, on the website, globalwellnessinstitute.org, if you're just fascinated at all with, with this industry, or if you work in this industry. It's a great resource. They've got this beautiful kind of um, this, this infographic that, that highlights some of the most, uh, the, the rising stars, that the niche areas that are worth a ton of money in, in, in health and wellness. And that's, uh, that also sparked this question. The global wellness economy is $3.7 trillion. And this is 2015. So, okay, it's 2017 now. You can only imagine it's, it's, it's more than that. Things you might know about. The spa industry alone is worth $99 billion globally. The fitness and mind and body, $542 billion. The healthy eating, nutrition, and weight loss, not surprisingly, it's massive. It's worth $648 billion. And something that's, that's really interesting, and, and especially here in the United States, with states passing um, certain laws um, and legalities around cannabis, I'm fascinated by the rise in, um, in alternative medicine. So complementary and alternative medicine is worth no fewer than $199 billion. So just kind of like digest those numbers. And again, if this isn't your, your specific industry, I think you can appreciate just how massive these are. So why the heck am I using health and wellness as an example? Well, first off, I, I think the numbers are astounding. 
if you're if you're paying attention to numbers in your industry, it's easy to get overwhelmed, and it's easy to think that you might not have anything original to offer. But I'm here to tell you that you do. So here are some tips uh, to to help you find your voice in the in the crowded marketplace. Like let, let's just pretend for the purpose of this podcast that I am in the health and wellness industry. I could look at those numbers and say I've got nothing new to offer. My first tip for you would be. Uh, as long as you root everything in your purpose, your purpose, your reason for being, your reason for creating your business, for going into your industry, as long as you map back everything to that purpose, you will always have a personal and unique aspect of your business that nobody can copy. As long as you root everything you do in your brand in your communications, in your customer relations, back to your purpose. And this means not just think about it, but actually articulate your purpose, your purpose for being, your purpose for creating your business. And you just stick to that. That is your most personal and unique aspect of your business. So it really behooves you to actually articulate it. Put it all over your website. Create videos talking about it. Share your story and what drives you. For the time being, we're all still human. We tend to uh, relate to people or like people or buy from companies or, or volunteer our time um, w- with organizations based purely on being able to identify a little bit with or empathize uh, with with who we're working with. So you have a tremendous advantage to still stand out, even in crowded industries like health and wellness, as an example. Again, if you articulate your purpose everywhere, you don't have to really dive deep, but you know, this can be articulated in in an amazing tagline. So I encourage you to to always go back to your purpose. If you're confused, if, if you feel like you're just kind of copying or parroting other competitors, if you feel like you really don't have a voice, if you feel a little overwhelmed, go back to your original story. For some of you, this might be visiting that story for the first time in ages. But go back to your story, go back to your purpose, and make sure that you're actually communicating that purpose, the kind of the why, quote unquote, of why you're here. So that's the first tip. The second tip is to leverage your customers their testimonials, their reviews, their words to share their experience on your behalf. Again, this is not a revolutionary idea, but it's something easy to forget if we're kind of wrapped up in how am I going to stand out? I, you know, I need to find the perfect messaging. I need to advertise more. It's all about targeting. No, no, no. Go back to your roots. Go back to what's working. Take a look at your customers. Get them speaking on your behalf. Use those testimonials. Uh, that uh, describe their unique experience with you. Their words and that experience is unique. Again, so we're looking for these unique moments that that empower you to really stand out from the pack, okay? Third tip, and maybe the most powerful, and this is kind of what we're getting at. Focus on being timeless and trustworthy, not trendy. Let me just say that again. Because this is something I battle with too. It's, it, there's there's so much pressure to be trendy and and to use hashtags and and try to jump into the lexicon, especially among millennials. And you can just see uh, when brands are kind of trying too hard. Gary Vaynerchuk is famous now for uh, for owning VaynerMedia. You might remember him as the, the the entrepreneur who reviewed wine years ago and and now has has become kind of a global sensation. He's got this beautiful quote. He says, "quote." When it comes to social media, he says, quote, marketers ruin everything. And I have to laugh because it's so totally true. And I find myself sometimes like falling into the old trap of trying to be trendy, trying to jump into a conversation. Um, yes, brands do that really well, but not everyone does. And you can tell who's kind of succeeding and who's, who's, who's trying. I think a huge part of that you know, is, is just luck and timing. So rather than you focus on being trendy in your messaging, in conveying who you are, in trying to reach your customers, why don't you just focus on being timeless and being trustworthy? You can still be relevant and timeless, by the way. Timeless, what I'm saying when I mean timeless is sort of like, come from a place of service so that you are helping your customers solve a problem, meet a challenge, or excel. That stuff is always going to be relevant and of value. 
And the very last uh, tip is, you know, if, if you have the opportunity to trademark or patent or protect um, any of your intellectual property, do it. I mean, it's, it's kind of a no-brainer with products, but sometimes, especially on the coaching side or the consulting side, or maybe your business, you might not realize that you actually are sitting on something that's unique. Now, this is getting more and more tricky. I mean, if you've ever tried to buy and launch a website URL, you're noticing like chances are the website you want .com is taken. It, it, I mean, I think that's just proof that like we are using up the internet and the myth that there is no original idea. It's already been thought of well on the internet. I, I, I disagree with that, but I think there's always a different take. But as long as the internet, as far as we know it, is still mostly run by humans, will continue to evolve. So again, the last tip is really, if you, if you create an original word, a property, if you, if you happen to create a powerful phrase or key messages in your business that is not already trademarked, um, protect it. That, it's kind of a coup. Um, because it's like, I work with clients all the time. They, we come up with an idea, we come up with a phrase and you just, you have to check and, and half the time they're, they're taken up. And it kind of goes back to my first point is don't sweat it. Don't get overwhelmed. You know, when you're looking at a three point, what is it? 3.7 trillion industry, like the health and wellness, you know, chances are you might have to go back to the drawing board a few times. If your, if your goal is focused solely on being original, so that's a good place to stop. It's sort of like, don't focus on being original. Just focus on articulating your purpose because it already is. It's unique, okay? This is one of my favorite topics. I think I'll probably come back to it uh, quite a bit. The question is how to find your voice in a crowded marketplace. The first one is articulate your purpose everywhere. Just, just focus on the purpose. That is your most personal and unique aspect of your business. The second one is use, leverage your customer's own experiences to do the talking for you, testimonials and reviews. Third, you know, focus on being timeless and trustworthy, not trendy. And fourth, if you have the opportunity to trademark or protect um, your, uh, your IP, uh, your branding in, in any form, um, do that, okay? So these are my tips, to hopefully to get you kind of fired up about the new year. Um, as a card-carrying member of someone who gets in her own way, I can spend days thinking about this question. And sometimes when you think about, you know, you might find that fall down the rabbit hole of getting really, really frustrated. And what I don't want to happen is, is for you to, to do that. So that's the purpose of today's uh, podcast. I will link to this fabulous um, infographic I refer to uh, in, in the description of my podcast. You can also find out more about the brand strategy sessions I mentioned at, mentioned at the top. And if you're actually curious about just getting to your purpose, you can find out more information on, the web, on my website. Uh, and, you know, of course, you can do that and also find me on social media. So I'm really curious to hear your reaction to this podcast and maybe other frustrations you're, you're dealing with, because I want to make those topics uh, that I focus on um, to, to help you get out of your own way, right? So if you have a question or a comment, definitely reach out to me on social media or on my website, jessicapain.us. Otherwise, I will see you next time. Take care and happy new year.